Hello and welcome to Kamen Rider Black Man. Say, I need a moment to get into more reviewer wear. Alright, perfect. Anywho, Kamen Rider Zeos, episodes 25 through 27. So, let's start talking about them. Alright, starting off with episode 25, it's nighttime and Schwartz is taking notice of the Lion Constellation star, Regulus, saying that that star will shine its brightest on Oma Day. The next day, we meet our first revived another writer, another O's, as he obtains the power of another build. Yeah, this the plot for this episode on the villain side is finding a previous and other writers and stealing their powers. That is at least the goal of one particular person that we'll get to later. Well, now, actually we talked about them right now because kicking things off, it's Sogo and Waz investigating the matter and soon meeting the one stealing their powers who takes the form of another build. And the first thing Sogo, Sogo naturally does is fight him using the build armor, which doesn't work and, C and Zio and Waz soon retreat as they leave. Another build detransforms and it's someone who in particular knows Sogo because after they leave, he says his name. Now, moving on with Gates and Tuskomi, they are later made aware of the matter oh, while that's happening, but that's no big deal because the next scene is Sogo waking up from a dream of him and Gates fighting in the ocean. And seriously, water fights have gotten pretty graphic. They first started off as spots for videos that will soon be on World's Dumbest, but now they're a spot for wet bromances. So, Sogo wakes up and Waz explains Regulus's shining nature. It's shining brighter. The shining bright. Ah, it's shining bright is. Ah, yeah. The reason why it's shining so bright is because it's a sign of Oma Day, since Regulus is the king star. Yeah, I need water. Anywho, the point now is that the previous victims of the week are now in danger, and they need to go protect them. Our villain shows up again and steals another Fize's powers, and encounters Gates and Sogo. Gates pursues him and just gets his ass kicked, because seriously, dude, why bother? And so, Kamen Rider Waz shows up and next to fight, and they actually get and actually get somewhere. So, another Fives reveals himself, and he says that he knows Sogo and leaves it at that. Skimming through, we meet the man who is another wizard, who in return has no memory of being another wizard, and therefore doesn't remember Sogo. So when Sogo reintroduces himself, he looks like a weird creepy kid that you don't want to trust around your pets. Our hero, everyone. You see how he's my favorite character? Anyway, Tsukomi goes to the clock shop and asks Sogo's uncle about the kid who can transform into another writer. First of all, his name is Hiru Kakogawa, and he has no clue about him and then goes to bring up before when Sogo well, came to live with him, say, 10 years ago. Well, back then, so Sogo still lived with his parents. Dude, he's, with the he's lived with his uncle since he was a kid. And so what did you think? That his parents just disappeared and that one day he became Spider-Man? The uncle explains that Sogo's parents are dead because when he was eight, they died in a strange bus accident where there were plenty of survivors, oddly enough. Either who, the two of them being Sogo and Hiru. Oh, and Sogo can weird someone out to make them run away. Wait, sir, I just want to watch over you while I'm smiling. There's nothing to be afraid of. My, my, my mysterious yet dangerous friend is also here too with his magical scarf. Also, 
Well, Kiryu shows up next, and him and Sogo soon have a- Me stalking you will have to wait, and next time bring your camera. So, they fight as ZO2 and versus another guy, and Gates of Wash soon join in the pit. <laughs> Fuck you, man. But that wasn't Star Wars related. It just feels good, okay? In battle, Gates tries to use the Gates Revive Watch with no luck, and he reveals himself to be another Zeo. So, let's talk about his suit. He looks like Hellraiser. Now, I'm kidding. Like, if you know what Hellraiser is, and if you don't, look him up and compare that picture to him. Because he looks like Hellraiser. Straight in the face. Come think about it, as well as in the body, too. But he has that chest armor covering it up. Which, by the way, I like how the chest is. Like, it's pretty, pretty nice. Also, for his for a primary weapon, he gets dual swords that are shaped of hand, of hands on a clock, to which he can also bring them together. That's awesome. And so, Wool is shocked by this and confronts Schwartz about another Zeo, claiming that he'll be the king of Dark Another Riders. Eh. Better than Kamer Dien in his final form. At least he looks like Hellraiser and not some trading card book. Hey, now someone has to mop that up. I'm surprised that these guys are called the Time Jackers and not the Time Jackasses. And, uh, and so our episode ends with both of them predicting each other's moves. Episode 26 picks up right where we left off with that battle ceasing... And so go unconscious. Death Note Woes is disappointed in Gates because he no longer has the drive to want to kill Sogo. And how does Gates respond? I mean, ah. And how does Gates respond? By running up to Waz and grabbing his shirt. Because all tough guys show their dominance by how many wrinkles they leave. <laughs> I know how to handle my business, and I'll show you up close. Want to make out? Claiming that the Revive Watch is still being inactive is proof of that. He pretty much shrubs them off. So, now, dreaming about Gates and Zeo fighting again, Sogo wakes up and even says that Zeo 2 may be strong, but not strong enough to take on another Zeo. Dude, you, you could have mentioned that earlier. Like, how the hell does ZO2 how the hell does the ZO2 ride watch work? Or at least does it have a warranty? Or better, does Waz have a warranty? Because one of the two that I would like to replace. <sighs> Tuskomi, on the other hand, goes back in time to the day of the bus accident, but before the actual accident, we go through the aftermath. On, on the accident when Sogo's in the hospital and eight years old, we see an eight-year-old Sogo make it official that his uncle will be his guardian from now on, and Hiro was in the accident as well, as as well as the same room as Sogo, but he but Hiro's a bit more bitter because of his family's death and blames Sogo. Why does he blame Sogo? It infuriated me at first but we'll get to it when we do trust me okay now that's too obvious to just be there it's a time machine not a regular car 
someone's going to look at it and go, what the fuck is that? So, in the present, Gates and Wool have a conversation about Omade coming, and for some reason, nobody wants to attack each other. Seriously, this is, just, this is something I just realized. Not once have anyone seen anyone of the villains one-on-one -on -one or just thought, hey, what if I pulled my gun out or whatever and just shoot him? That way, two da that way, one down, two more to go. Seriously, they've had conversations before while either time is frozen or not, or if one of them was just there. No one has ever thought about just pulling out a weapon or stabbing or just shooting the, these guys, since they are the villains and all. Eh, whatever. Gloss over. Now, back with Sogo, Hayase quit his magician job and is followed by Hirus to steal his powers. And for an adult going up against a teenager, you'd think it would be he would keep it in mind. Uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. I'm not it'd be too much work to edit that out. Anywho. Hayase quits his magician job and is followed by Hiru to steal his steal his powers. And for an adult going against a teenager, you think it would have more mind to defend himself. Other than run up to him with his fist in the air, only for it to get blocked. Ah! Expose me! Sogo and Hiru meet again, and before they fight, Hiru of course explains his reasoning, which is what I already said. He blames Sogo for the accident, but in detail and in visual montage, a woman in white shouts out Sogo's name. And shoots a laser from a cell phone like gun. Huh. Mari must be finally able to use the Fize belt. Nah, I'm kidding. It's to scale me. So, so yeah. What, it's all rolled, or at least to us, the watchers, it's all rolled together. And it looks like to scale me pulled the trigger and caused the murder all those years ago. Now, let me. Now, let me get off the story for a minute. I get where he's coming from. Where I get where Hiru's coming from. But my problem is it's indirect revenge. He's taking it out on Sogo because he was there. But the common, and he's also the common point, instead of being upset with the one who actually pulled the trigger... Like, I'm just saying, like, you're upset with Sogo, but he actually, but he didn't actually do the job. He was the target. It's like, this is a good example. It's like being at an assassination and you're getting, it's like being at an assassination attempt and you're more upset with the person who is supposed to be murdered as opposed to the murderer. Like, it's not... It's like you're not directing your anger at the at the right person. Anyway, I'm just saying. So, like I said, when I first saw this episode to begin with, I immediately hated Tuskomi and Gates because it looked like they caused all this mess and were screwing around up until now for no goddamn visible reason. Is but that's how I thought of this at first. I'm opening my mouth a bit piece by piece anyway about this because this does in a way get interesting. Anywho, so Gage shows up in 2009 too because Tuskomi is also there to investigate. And spoiler alert, he caught evidence of what happened out of context so he didn't get the full story. So, per usual... And I say that per, per usual because Gates always does anything recklessly or out of context. So, back to where we should be now. Gates goes back to 2019 and intervenes with Zio and another Zio's fight. To now use the Revive Ride Watch. Because now he can turn into it. Well, he, he's now he can turn it on. I don't know how with what we just saw, but... Uh, whatever. Anywho, 
Gates's new form, Common Rider Gates Revive, and in reverse, and in reverse, Death Note Woes is the one hyping him up. But he, but the thing about with, <laughs> I know this is of course one of the reasons why I like Death Note Woes or White Woes, as others say he is. He does it in such a snarky and cocky way. Like, you better get ready to kiss his ass, and I love it, because he's just hyping him up and being so rude about it, like, this guy is so strong and powerful, you don't stand a chance against him, you're fucked, prepare your ass for his foot, because he is going to swing it in there like a baseball bat, and he does it in such a, and he, I don't know what it is, he does it in such a prickish way, that, but it's probably because he keeps having a smile about it. Like, yep, this is how it's going down. Enjoy it. Anywho, <laughs> let's talk about Gates Revive. I was not a big fan of this suit at first, but... Oh, well, let me be real. He has two forms here. My issues about... About it at first were first of all in its first full primary form which the bulky armor i felt like it was a bit too bulky and he looked like something he looked like some type of setting in like a children's play like he could be he looks like he's dressed like he looks like he's dressed up as the moon in a children's play because some of that bulky armor, it almost covers up his mouth. Also, red and orange just don't go together, in my opinion. But, I've grown to look past that. And to be real, it's... Not te- yeah, it's not awful. It's not terrible. So, I'll give it that. The typhoon form, on the other hand, the blue form. That, I will not pull my punches on. Because it's all blue on top, but and it's, the rest is just, com- at least the bottom half is black. I don't know, I just felt like it was just too dark there, but no, that's, so that's just me. And Gates Revive wipes the floor with another Zeo at first, and then, too bad, so sad, three minutes left of the episode, so the fight cuts short, and instead, Gates Revive and Zeo 2 fight each other. But before that, remember what I said about ZO2 needing a warranty? Yeah, it ain't up to date anymore because Gates can move faster than ZO can predict the future. So now, finish wrapping this up, moving on to our final episode, episode 27. They still go at it. Wall shows up and nabs Gates into retreating elsewhere since them fighting now would be benefiting Wa- well, Death Note Waz. Yes, I'm still going to call him Death Note Waz because he still has that Death Note power. Just in case anyone's new and is asking. Anyway, Waz and Gates retreat and reveals that Gates' revives unparalleled power results in it wrecking Gates' body and could possibly kill him. Gates, of course, doesn't care about that. And he reflect and the reason why he doesn't care is because how he's able to actually get into being Gates Revive, of course, is that he reflects because he feels guilty that Tiskomi went so far for what they're doing and he really just can bring out that power when she was still around. And so that just makes him feel completely guilty and he couldn't make up his mind from it that still doesn't make up for like everything that's gone on up till now so still going on with it would just be saying fuck it gates now goes after was trying to kill him and i'll admit he gets close the gates runs into death note was again and God, does he just act so subdued in his what? My savior poses. 
Yet also, he says to himself that Gates' sacrifice just needs to take a bit more time with him using that watch. So he knows that the ride watch could kill him and is a bit evil about it. So, moving on. Sogo and his uncle... Okay, this is an episode highlight, because him and his uncle have a heart-to-heart while renting the extra space that they have. Seriously, I didn't even know that Gates and Toscomi paid rent until a friend of mine... Yeah, I literally did not know that Gates and Toscomi paid rent, un- literally until a friend of mine reminded me of how they could just produce money from an iPad that Toscomi just had from episode one. So there's an answer to that question. So back to Soko and Junichiro. Junichiro. I keep saying that he should be more involved in the show. And this is a natural step to showing their nephew and uncle relationship. It's revealed, it reveals that, it reveals that raising a kid that's a loner or has problems making friends, it's something to call out for their own self so that it won't mess them up as an adult. Junjiro isn't overly protective of Sogo, but he does care and love him. He then drives it home. When he ends this sentence with, and I pause the video to get this word for word, you'll end up as a leader who has no empathy for his people. That sold it for me. And now, you look at Sogo, a youthful, hardworking, a little eccentric optimist, who's been through a lot and still keeps a smile on his face. He is human, and a part of being human is having flaws. There's nothing wrong with that, and there's nothing to hide about being flawed, because no one's perfect. It ends with Sogo saying thank you, and he leaves with a smile on his face. And the uncle makes such an expression as if he got a lot off his chest, and it's because he's doing a good job at being that kid's guardian. I really like I really like that scene. And it is and with all that action happening, it needed something a bit heart touching. Well, now that that's over, let's keep talking about Sogo. Especially the day his parents died. From the last episode, it looked like Tuscomi was the one who caused all this, but turns out it was Schwartz. He was the one who caused the bus accident as a trial for little kids to see if they'll survive the accident. That'll mean that they will ha- that they had the potential to be a king. As for Hiryu's parents, Tsukiyomi is aiming for Schwartz and he ricochets the bullets hitting, well with the hat, hitting Hiryu's parents instead. Say, oh also, by the way, while all this is happening... Schwartz also froze time, or at least for the parents, while the bus is still moving. So only him and the kids are act are still actually moving. And Sogo, as a kid, had balls to actually confront Schwartz and go, Hey, you're the one who's doing this. Cut this shit out. <sighs> Shame it didn't end well. Oh, in decades there. He's just there. Seriously, who in the writing room just keeps suggesting him? So, that's what really happened. Schwartz is the fucker behind all this shit. And so, back in the present, as a plan, as a plan Wool uses another Zeo to steal Kamen Rider Waz's powers so that Death Note Waz could write in the book to retrieve him. And... Interception. Regular Waz steals Kamen Rider Waz's powers, but it was a near trick. And while it was a near trick that went successful without any problems, 
regular Waz explains that when he said the power to return to Waz, he didn't specify. And now I can finally use this clip as a joke. <sighs> Waz, how do you feel about losing your powers? Waz and Gates meet again, and now, Waz is now up a level, now that he's a writer. And so the episode ends there with, with Gates and Waz fighting, and Sogo basically being on his way there. So, ah, really need to see masseuse. Overall, these episodes are great. 25 is good, 26 is mixed at best, just because it's the one in the middle, and 27 is fantastic. What Zio is good at is further explanation and exploration, and these episodes were like building up a lore to Oma Zio, where he got his start, how he got his start, and who was responsible for it. Hiru, another victim of Schwartz's treachery, was a fantastic choice for another Zio, because now... There's something further to dive into with Sogo's backstory. And let's see how and to see how far he's come. But at the cost of him being one up, of course, now. Speaking of which, Gates' sudden change of heart is sort of um, in the air. Because it came from once again reading something out of context. Like he saw to Skomi pull the trigger. And because, and because it came from, once again, reading something out of co Oh, wait, no, I'm reading the same line. My apologies. He saw Tuskomi pull the trigger and cause what spawns everything in his perception, but didn't see Schwartz there and therefore doesn't know the whole story. So instead, he'd be going off of what he saw that just looks like them trying to cover up a mistake they made, which technically is what happened. Everything else is good. The heart to heart between the uncle and nephew, Joichiro and Sogo, as well as the two walls, or at least their or at least their confront confrontation with the two walls was good. Black walls for being the shit, and deaf walls for being himself. But there's apparently more with him than we think, and I wonder what that could be. Intrigued face and goatee, just massaging also when you see that clip again of death note was just screaming like first of all was actor is great but just seeing that happen or at least just seeing him scream it makes me think what the hell else does he have up his sleeve or at least what could he have up his sleeve anywho I'm gonna, I'm really curious now. Anywho, I'm a little more excited now to see what will be in episode 28. I plan to do that video alone so that when we get to the Kamen Rider Blade tribute, FYI, Blade is one of my favorite Kamen Rider seasons, I can just do those two episodes together. Now, what was I gonna say? Now, well crap, I forgot what I was gonna say. It was something. Um, that's it for, oh yeah, now I remember. Does anyone know where episode 28 is subbed at, or if it's subbed at all now? Because literally, I just saw a clip of it being subbed on Instagram. But, yeah, if it's subbed out anywhere, hopefully I can find it and review it for next time. And with that said, while we're getting into the month of April... My next full show review, heads up, will be Ultraman Mebius. Finally, I can get that out of the way. Because, man, I've been a bit slacking off a bit with the timings of when those show reviews come out. But, thank you for watching my... Thank you for watching today's video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, tell your friends about Kamen Rider Black Man. Hell, share this video if you'd like to. 
and I will see you guys next time. Peace.